God is good. All the time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Please rise as we sing of the greatness of our Lord. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, you have invited us to this holy ground and called us to be light shining into the darkness, to be the answer to the cries of your world. Forgive us for holding back. Forgive us for taking without giving and tearing down without building up. Open our ears to hear you calling. Pour your spirit upon us to help us to amend our lives that we might serve you well and bring healing to your world. Thank you, Lord, for hearing your children this morning. Amen. Now I ask you to turn to your neighbor, choose who is going to speak first, and say these words. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. And now the others speak. In the name of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This is a special time for the giving jar. Kids, now it is your time to run and collect what you find from us. Today's giving jar is designated to Operation Christmas Child, a mission dedicated to demonstrating God's love in a tangible way to children in need around the world. Let us welcome this time of special giving. Oh, 
Years have passed since Moses ran from Egypt. Now, his, now he is tending sheep. While leading his flock, he saw a strange fire. And as he drew near, he encountered God who created everything and who cares deeply for people. A reading from Exodus chapter 3. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at the great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Our responsive reading is Psalm 8, that testifies to God's greatness in creation. His greatness is demonstrated in his willingness to give human beings who he has created charge of tending the life of what he has made on planet Earth. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your God, your glory, is higher than the heavens. When I look at the night sky, and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals. 
and everything that swims in the ocean currents. God can seem weak when you're in prison. Paul and Silas and the entire prison find God Almighty very present as they choose to worship him. A reading from Acts chapter 16. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, They were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word to the Lord of him and all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he he and his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. The word of the Lord. If you're able, would you please rise for the gospel? Our gospel for this morning is recorded in Mark's gospel, the eighth chapter, beginning of the 27th verse. And here Jesus takes his disciples to it through a place that was absolutely littered with demonstrations of Roman power and Roman culture. And in the midst of a culture that itself claimed to be God, Jesus brings his disciples, and namely Peter, to a real confession of what is true, a real confession of faith. So from verse 27, Mark chapter 8, we read, Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And we're going to try something brave today. Young ones, come up forward. We're going to have to be pretty quick because we have a lot going on today. So we're going to set this over here. You want to hang on to that for just a little bit? Thank you. Oh, and I'm going to come come around you. It's a little table. It's a little table. Yes, it is. Yeah. How's everybody doing today? That's good. Well, I'm going to show you something absolutely, totally amazing. This is going to be the, the best thing you've seen all day, I'm sure. You know what I'm going to do. Shh. Are you ready? Here we go. Ooh. What do you think of that? Isn't that cool? Well, what's holding the balloon up? Air. air. I don't know. I, I don't see any air. air. It's invisible. It's invisible. Well, how do you know it's there? Because of the air. 
because of the air. So you're telling me that something that's invisible is holding up the balloon. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing because guess what? Have you ever had anybody... Um, well, what you're saying here is that, okay, the balloon doesn't float on its own, right? It needs a little help. And something invisible is holding the balloon up. It's, it's helping it float. Yeah. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Isn't that something? Have you ever had anybody, like, scoop you up and stick them on, on, your, on their shoulders? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And you know what? This is what God does for us all the time. God is here to lift you up. Yeah. To help you fly like you're supposed to. Yeah. To help you be all that, you, that God has called you to be. You're his child. And he is your, he's your heavenly father. And so with, with that, let's... I'm going to turn this off. Whoa. Let's bow our heads and thank God for, for being the one who lifts us up. All right? And, okay, so let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you that you carry me, that you lift me up, even when I don't know that you're there. You're always there. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Thank you for coming up here this morning. You did a great job, and you didn't spill the beans. That was good. All right. Let's... Uh, let, yes, yes. This I know. Just take one. Just... You know, God is there even when we don't see Him. There are days when we sense it, days when we don't. But God never fails in His care for us. And that's what we're about this morning. And especially as these, we have seven up front here that are going to affirm their faith before, of, before us. And just to know that we're all in this together. And just thank you so much to parents, sponsors, all of, all of you who have stood behind these kids, prayed for them. This is a really sharp bunch. I really miss them in class. Uh, yep, they... We've, we, we've just had a number of, of classes of kids, students that have, you know, they've been there to ask really good questions and to really try some things out. And this is part of them. So it's a really star bunch. So I'm just gonna, going to, to begin by saying, you know what you believe really matters? In fact, just the other day, at least this story has been going around town, a police officer went and stopped a car it had, it, that was uh, occupied by three, well, we'll just say elderly ladies. And this car was like moving like really slow. And so the officer, she came up, he came up to the, to the window and he says, ma'am, do you realize how slow you're driving? Well, she said, the sign says 21. I'm going 21 miles an hour. And he goes, ma'am, that, that's the number of the highway. That's not the speed limit. And she goes, oh. And as she's putting two and two together, he's looked around to, to her other passengers, and they are, their eyes are as big as saucers. Their, their hands are just like dug into the upholstery. And, and the officer goes, are you okay? 
and they're speechless. And she, he goes to the driver, What's, what has gone on here that's, that's got your passenger so terrified? She said, well, we just got off of Highway 131. <laughs> you see, what you believe makes a difference. Whether how you read a highway sign or how you define life, what you believe defines your actions, how you see God, how you value other people. Yeah, can you, and, and what you believe to be true and what you believe to be a lie. And when the chaos begins to surround you, and we've had a real progression of chaos these last couple weeks, have we not? At least on the world scene. And we've even had a fair amount of it in our culture that we've wrestled with. When that chaos surrounds you, the most powerful words you can say begin with the words, I believe. The most powerful words, two simple words, but they make it possible to sort out good from evil and truth from lie, and your chaos becomes ordered. And these simple words are what uh, the Apostles' Creed is built around. And uh, Bible scholar Albert Muller states this about the Apostles' Creed. And this is just really interesting because Albert Muller is a, is a Baptist Bible scholar. Not to say anything against our Baptist brothers and sisters. But they don't use the Apostles' Creed very much, as, if at all, in worship. Uh, yeah. But he says this, when, when he encountered the Apostles' Creed and really studied it, he says, this is Christianity. All Christians believe more than is contained in the Apostles' Creed, but none can believe less. So, uh, none can believe less. And so we're going to inject this amazing confession of faith. This is going to be part of our time together, too, as, as you affirm your faith. Uh, uh, we're going to confess the, the words of the Apostles' Creed together. But we're in, in our Love and Chaos series, we're going to be taking a look at each part of this of the, of the creed, because this creed has shepherded Christians for nearly, of every nearly stripe, for over a thousand years. Can you believe that? Yeah. Pastor Bill, as we were, we were going through uh, and, and taking you through all the things that are going to happen today, yeah, uh, he, he gave you some hints that what's going on here, uh, you're a part of something that has, has been going on for a long time, a very long time. And there's an amazing uh, part of that, uh, that we stand on some good, solid shoulders as followers of Jesus. So, so we're going to take a look at the Apostles' Creed here, just, a, in, uh, and th just the first part of it today. And we call it the Apostles' Creed because it is the sum total of what the Apostles taught. It's not that you find it in the Bible somewhere, but it is the sum total of what the Apostles taught. And it summarizes in three paragraphs what the Bible teaches about God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son of God, and the work of the Holy Spirit. Yep, three paragraphs. And so let's, uh, and each one of those paragraphs we call articles. So let's say together the first article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Notice everything that we're stating there. I believe that God is, that God is real. And not only is God real, but I believe that He is the power behind the creation of the universe. Yep, I believe in God the Father as well. I mean, I believe that God is close. I mean, really close. And sometimes too close for comfort. You know, and I picked out a couple of really familiar Bible stories here. Remember this story? Yeah. Brennan, what's this, this story all about? It's Moses, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's Moses and the burning bush. Yeah, the whole thing about the burning bush, though, was it burned up? No. So there you have the power of God right there. Uh, and also we have God's closeness there as well. Moses finds himself in the very presence of God. And that made for an experience of a terrible kind of love. And I, uh, and I call it terrible because it's a love that is so intense that it scares you. 
And from Exodus chapter 3, uh, we read, Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. And there again, are you noticing the expressions of absolute compassion here? Indeed, I know their sufferings. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh and bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Yes. And it's also it's great to notice here that he's sending Moses, but who's doing the work? He is. Yeah. It's kind of like watching that balloon float. You know, there's always this invisible power at work in each one of our lives. Yes. And, and Moses never heard God's heartbeat really truly until, he, until God really got his attention. And here again, King David, in a similar way, was, was amazed with God's closeness and power and compassion. Just listen to what he wrote in Psalm 8. When I look at the night sky, when I see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them and human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all, these thing, all things under their authority. O oh Lord, our Lord, huh? your majestic name fills the earth. You know? See, God is, was leading both Moses and David, and he is, in a similar way, he's leading us to say these amazing words, I believe in God. The Father Almighty. I believe in God, that God is so close, so powerful, so compassionate. And Martin Luther, of course, explains it this way. We do say these words every once in a while in worship. I believe, and there again, the, the most powerful words you can say, I believe that God created me and all that exists, that He has given me and still preserves my body and soul, my ears and, and my reason and all my senses, together with food and clothing, home and family, and all my property. Every day he provides abundantly for all the needs of my life. Wow. So, so Cameron, how many harsh, ugly words were in that, were in that explanation? Anything in there? How God wants to crush you. Yeah, that's what a lot of people think. What does God do for you? And Luther explains this in very fatherly and paternal terms. That's, he wants it, that God is close, wants to be close. He wants you to know him. Not, he's not to be some secret somewhere up in the sky. But he's, he's, he's close, he's powerful, he's compassionate. I believe that God has created me, that God has brought me here. You're not here by accident. And I believe that he provides for me everything I need, from everything from clothes to a roof over my head. You guys got have those things? Yep, get food on the table. Looks like you're all growing pretty good. Yeah, excellent. Yes. And it gets right down to the very relationships that are absolutely essential to my life. Don't you love family? Most of the time. Half the time? <laughs> I know, yeah. But just to know that God is also your protector, that he, you are safe in his care. This is what I believe. I believe that God is a good father, the best father. Now, one of my first experiences uh, with God's closeness, his power, and his compassion was when I was in college. You know. When I was in college, you know, it's kind of a passionate time in life. And uh, I got into it with another guy to the point where we wanted to deck each other. I know it's hard to believe. And I can also tell you, Pooh would have probably won if that would have been all, uh, uh, if that would have gone its course. But thank God for friends. So that, number one, those relationships that you need, they were there. Yeah. But I still couldn't let it go. Uh, I wa it was one of the first times that I actually truly knelt by my bedside because I didn't know what else to do. Um, and I confessed to God that I had a problem. Please, God, I can't let this, I can't let this anger go. Uh, help me. And the second I said that, my anger lifted. I mean, it was like totally gone. 
And like Moses, I was terrified. Why? Because I never knew God was that close. I didn't know that he, know, that he knew me. And I didn't know that God, that it was just there again, that experience of really a terrible kind of love. It's so love that's, that a love that is so intense that it scares you. And that was an amazing experience. God is a good father who is so close, so awesomely powerful, so intensely compassionate. It's, it's absolutely terrifying. And the culture that you live in does everything it can to pull us away from all of that. That's why Jesus, I think, took his disciples on a little field trip to the site surrounding Caesarea Philippi. I mean, this is like going to Las Vegas. Because this, is, this was one of the pride, uh, you know, the, the, the pride, the, the, the beautiful cities uh, in that area. I mean, columned buildings. You had uniformed officers. A city with, had, that had great places to eat. Don't, let's not forget the f- entertainment, you know. All of these things going on. I mean, it's like sensory overload almost for these disciples who uh, grew up around in the, in the Galilee area. Yeah. And amidst all of this noise, Jesus asked them a couple of questions. The first one is just a warm-up question. You know, who do people say that I am? You know, and it's easy to talk about other people, you know, about what they think and what they believe. But then he gets personal. But what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter pipes up and says, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. And with that statement of faith, Peter got it. For a little bit. And in a, just, a, just a moment, he's going to lose it if, you read it if you read down a little further. But at that moment, he's got it. He's got it right on target. Yeah. And Peter saw the face of God in Jesus Christ. And it is just amazing that God is so close. He's so amazingly personal, so tremendously powerful intensely compassionate. Here's the challenge. What is it that we've often told you students? What is the most difficult work you'll ever do? You remember? Most difficult work you'll ever do is grow up. (laughs) The most difficult work you'll ever do is grow up. Because growing up is all about drinking it in for yourself, being able to say for yourself, I believe in God. I believe that God is good and that life flows from His Father heart. And that growing up part is important because I'm sure every Sunday morning you just like to bounce out of bed and say, let's go to church. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Well, you know, this is the growing up part because you know what? Even if everybody else in this room who might be a little bit older than you, there's days when they feel it and days when they don't. I can say the same thing for me. When the chaos or maybe just the numbness of everyday life uh, tries to take over everything and drown out uh, God's voice in my life. And there again, whenever you come to that, those points of difficulty, when you can't feel it, what should you do? Get up and get to church and, and join other people who can help you say your prayers and help you confess what's true. We all need that help. Uh, join with people who are, uh, you know, in stating the truest, most powerful thing that there ever is to confess. And that begins with those two, there again, two amazing words, I believe. I believe in God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, that He created me, that He doesn't create junk I believe that God is close and that He's compassionate and powerful even though I might not feel it right now. See, recorded in the book of Acts is an experience that Paul and Silas had with God. Do you remember this story? We went through this one last year. Life got hard for them very quickly. Uh, this was a time when Satan was out to grind them into the dust, what the devil likes to do to all of us. 
And Paul and Silas were swept up in a riot. They were arrested by the authorities. They were severely beaten as a preliminary punishment and then shackled into the, one of the deep cells in the prison. Can you, yeah? Talk about chaos. Talk about a turn of events. Talk about life being flipped upside down. And at this point, it would be so tempting just to just give up. Just give up. You know, just give them what they want. Give in, give in to the powers that be. But what did they choose to do? Paul and Silas chose to, there again, speak, in this, in this case, sing, the most powerful words that can ever be spoken. I believe in God the Father Almighty. They sang of the power and goodness and Father heart of God and the prison shook until the doors fell off. See, today I want you to drink in what it means to stand up and say what you believe to be true. I believe that God is my heavenly Father. I believe that God is good in spite of what the culture is saying right now. I believe that following Him leads to life and that His way is best. And I can't believe He loves me, but He does. And in turn, as, as I follow His command and His lead, He helps me sort out things like the truth from the lies that the culture tells. And He gives me the part, of the, uh, part of this amazing responsibility of sorting out the chaos. You know, managing my home. Yeah. How many of you made your bed this morning? Oh, hey, a couple of you did. All right. You brush your teeth? Okay, that's part of managing the chaos. All right. Very good. Anybody help do the laundry? That's, yep, some of you do. Yeah. Those chores, you're attacking chaos. I want to let you know that. Your parents are trying to teach you that. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and that is part of managing your home. And you're going to, that's going to in turn manage your family and, and then your workplace and then all that God has made. It's amazing. Wow, what an adventure you guys are on. And we're all here to support you all the way through. And when you don't feel it, especially then, come to church. Come to church. Because we can say together, chaos be warned. I believe in God. In the same way, let us all keep and live the faith. Amen. Will those who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism into Christ, would you please come forward as you have? And I'm going to also invite parents, grandparents, sponsors or mentors. Uh, can you please come up behind your student as well at this time. And as you gather, brothers and sisters in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ brought you into the, His church in the care of this community. You have learned His word from God's word as God's loving purpose for you and all creation. Just look at all these people who have been standing behind you all the way. And you have been nourished at His table and called to be witnesses to the gospel of Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> At this point, we're going to ask the confirmation class to uh, turn around and invite everybody to stand, the congregation, if you will. And if you would like them in turning around to face the back of the church, and I'll tell you why we're asking you to do that. In the early years of the Christian faith, when people went through the process of becoming fully involved in the fellowship of the church, in some cases, it was before their baptism. They were asked to come together to make a statement of faith. And actually, the Apostles' Creed may go back in its earliest forms to this time. And the first question they would be asked after completing their instruction is, is the one I'm going to ask about renouncing the devil and all the forces of the world. 
They were actually, when they faced the back of the church, they were facing the outside world. And what they were declaring to the outside world is we are no longer going to live as you live. We are no longer going to hold on the values that you value. We will not worship idols. We will not be a part of that. In other words, they're saying to the chaos, we're not going to take part in that anymore. We're not going to do the devil's work. And so they'd ask this question. They would shout to the world out there the answer to that. And then if you notice, the next one is they ask if they would turn to Christ and then they would turn around. But let's begin. And again, if you want to be with a confirmation class, go ahead and face the world out there. And join them in their response to this question. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? In like manner. Do you now turn to Christ as your Lord and Savior? And as we, as we confess this, would you please turn and face the altar? In faith, I turn to Christ. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born, born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. buried. He descended he into hell. hell. On, On the third day he rose again. again. He, he ascended, ascended into, into heaven and is seated at the right hand, hand of the Father. Father. He, he will, will come, come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy the Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, confirmands, I address you all as it's asking you these questions. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ Jesus? to join in making disciples of all nations and serving all people following the example of Jesus? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for their life in Christ? If so, you respond, we do and we ask God to help and guide us. We do and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, with your Holy Spirit, now increase in these young people your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the true love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 and 39. Faith. Let us pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in faith the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Tyler Betcher, keep running the race that is set before you with endurance. Hebrews chapter 12, 1. Father in heaven's sake, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Tyler the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. 
Brennan Brown. You, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a home for him, so your servant has found courage to pray to you. First Chronicles 17, 25. Great Let us pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Brennan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Cameron Urshley. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose for those God foreknew. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Romans 8, 28 and 29. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Cameron the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her suffering, serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Quinn Gerke, trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Let us pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Quinn the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Abby Gordon, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. 1 Peter 4, 8. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Abby the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Cameron Steele, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Yes, let us pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Cameron the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Let us give thanks for those who affirm their baptism. Please join. As your sisters and brothers in the body of Christ, we rejoice with you this day. Together, let us praise to God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Uh, would you please turn and, and greet these young ones and all of you greet one another uh, with a greeting of our Lord.
Please stand for communion. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for your Son, Jesus, who redeems us from our sin. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, also the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Because you are one with us, O Christ, make us one with you as we pray. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So you please be seated and we'll come to communion as the ushers give us instructions. Just one additional word. We do have some gluten-free communion bread available. Somebody will be holding that in kind of the middle of the aisle. But a, a warning is necessary. I made this. <laughs> and, and it's so kind of new. I, I will concede that I sort of followed the recipe. Uh, and it's, it's, it's chewy. <laughs> but it is gluten-free. Pastor says it tastes, it tastes good. Uh, but you, you may need to take a second glass of wine with it. No, you can't have one. <laughs> Anyway, those helping with communion, please come forward.
And if you're able, I'll ask again, would you please stand? And now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most holy and precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. announcements a couple things first one week from today there is a congregational meeting to issue a letter of call to pastor k knight two things with this eligible voters are those who have been worshiped 10 times in the last 12 months uh, we need a quorum which means we need somewhere around 60 people we need about 60 people in order to make that an official vote it will need to be a two-thirds majority in order to send out the letter of call. We will meet in the fellowship hall, and this would be roughly around 9.15. Um, there's a letter of information out there, if you haven't seen it, with Pastor Kay with her picture on it. Again, if you haven't heard her, the time she was here to give a sermon, you can go to Facebook and uh, YouTube. There's a way to find that. I think that's on that sheet. You may have to call and get help from the office, because I would, but uh, other people won't. But again, that's a week from today. Uh, and the other thing, the confirmation class will be in a line, so you can greet them as you leave today. And David, any other announcements? I, I would just say that we're going to continue with this, this series, Bring Your Friends, and also we have a number of small groups 
tomorrow at 9 o'clock, tomorrow at 6 in the evening, another one at, on Tuesday at 6.30. Um, this is just a, it's just a wonderful thing. To, what does it mean to follow Jesus in the midst of all of the things that are going on in the world today? Uh, and uh, so just please join us. Okay, the next theme is love your neighbor. Yes. And chili cook-off on Saturday the 21st. That's right. And for Ooh. Family Promise, uh, the b benefit, it's the chili cook-off uh, on, it was, what, what day was that? That was 21st. The 20th, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday the 21st. Also, Very. please keep um, Sunrise VGC oh, yeah. Co-ed 15 that starts Thursday of uh, next week. Keep them in your prayers. Very good. Sunrise please VGC. Please do that. Any other announcements? Back there. Yes, Luann. Huh. <laughs> You're a marvelous group of people. I just want to let you know that. Just know that as you, as you give us the space to do our bit, and uh, we hope we empower you, you to do your bit, and that's what makes life beautiful. We follow God's call in whatever spot that he gives us to do it. Very good, Luann. And with all of that, may you now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah.